We're live in the studio. I'm here, Mindless Horror Podcast. It's been a bit. I'm here with my new co-host, Sammy. Hey, what's up, guys? Sammy, Sammy, Sammy. Some stuff is falling in the back. Guess I'm getting a little too comfortable back here. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of new podcast equipment, uh, and it's going to be fun. Yeah, I got this blue thing in my face. Yep. It's going to be cool. Sammy, you want to introduce the audience to yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah. What, what, do, what do I tell them? I don't know what to say. I don't know, man. So, what, I mean, you're not too big into horror. No, I'm a scaredy cat. So, yeah. like, imagine Andy from the Allen show. That's probably me. So, if you ever want to, like, have a fun time watching a scary movie, it's probably I'm probably the guy to bring because I'm bring. a big guy, but I'll be, like, at the edge of my seat the entire time. And me, I'm just a horror fanatic and... I'll watch it, go through all the mazes. Yeah. However, I won't do stuff that gets, like, where they touch you and stuff. I won't do that. Yeah, no, I, I probably wouldn't line. even go to a maze. I mean, I'd go, but, like, you'd have to pressure me. <laughs> you have to run out. I'm about to be in there, like, all right, yeah, you got me. <laughs> you got me. You're only allowed to scare me once. <laughs> scare me once. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about a couple things. Uh, today, uh, 20th century... Or I was reading that 20th Century has uh, gotten a trademark to a new Alien game. Uh, and I thought the Alien franchise was kind of over. Uh, especially since Disney bought out Fox. Yeah, you, you would think that. But I think Disney will try to capitalize. You know, you spent all that money with Fox. So you're going to try to make something with Alien. But I was surprised that it was Fox that was the one who was like, Hey, we got a game coming. Yeah, uh, I I just don't know because I think I think after F- Disney bought out Fox, that the um, I thought just the horror in general that everything Fox owned would just kind of go, you know. Yeah, you would. I I would think that too. But you know, they they bought them, and you, you see them still doing things that are controversial, like Deadpool and things like that that are rated R, um, and that are definitely not you know mouse Mickey Mouse friendly. Yeah. But so I, I think, you know, Disney is in it for the money. Um, and as long as they're not putting their name on it, I think they're down with it. So I played Alien game, which is Alien Isolation, which was actually really fun. And uh, I'm kind of curious to see where this will go as far as game goes. Um, Fox usually rarely makes games. And when they do, they're okay. They're not like the best games, but they're also not super shitty. Uh, I just don't know where this is going to go as far as uh, who's going to have more minority control over it. Is it going to be out of straight Fox, or is Disney going to put their name on it somehow? Or Yeah, that, that's going to be interesting. I think we'll learn some more. I was hearing December 6th at that Video Game Awards that they're going to maybe release more information. So I think we'd have to stay tuned for that. Stay tuned, yeah. December 6th is right around the corner, too. So... Uh... Uh, if you're watching this later, it already happened. You know more than we do now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let's just get more into depth about the future of horror in general with 20th Century Fox because they they license some of the most um, some of the most you know best horror movies too. You know they the whole Alien franchise, the Predator franchise. They just released a Predator movie this year, uh, and it did okay in the theaters. I want to say it, it wasn't a big. Thing to fa- but they did set it up for a sequel, so then a lot of people are wondering now are we going to get that sequel, which I don't think we will. I think that, once again, I think Disney, once again, loves money. Yeah. You know, you see them milking the money out of everything they own. Yeah. Um, even if they're putting out things that are absolute crap, they think they're, they're still trying to get money. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I think, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw an Alien vs. Predator movie remake. Remake. That'd be cool. I like the first two. The first two were good. Did you watch the first two? No, I've never seen any of Alien or Predator movies. Alien and Predator are good. I, I wouldn't say they're like... I would say they're more sci-fi than horror. I would consider maybe the first one maybe a horror movie because it was like ahead of its time. But as far as the, these movies, I, I consider them more sci-fi as they went on. Uh, especially Predator because Predator really... There's not really scary. It's more on the line of you, you have this, this alien who is essentially a predator trying to kill other people and that's what he does for sport that's what he does for a living he just kills people and honestly i think it's more of a sci-fi and stuff like that that's just what i think i mean i i've seen some previews especially of the new predator movie i thought it was cool but i had no idea they've been around for so long i had no idea that like they oh, were yeah. around in the 80s yeah yeah because i think the first um the first predator movie had arnold in it arnold schwarzenegger 
I, I didn't even know that. So. Yeah, he proves like, how much I know about these movies. <laughs> he, uh, he, yeah, he's in the first one, and he's iconic for that and stuff like that. Uh, you know, and then of course Sigourney Weaver is iconic for Alien. She was. Yeah, I was reading something online, and I think it was someone's opinion that they, if they did reboot the Alien franchise, that they would probably try to bring Sigourney Weaver back just for that. Uh, time sake of people like, oh, I want to go back to what it felt yeah. like. When I, I, I know I was on her movie. IMDb page this morning too, and I saw that she was slated to do something. Oh, did really? I didn't see that. But it didn't have a release date, so I wonder if that was the alien project they had in mind, and then they just they kind of canceled that after the whole Fox Disney merger. Uh, I mean, that's been a year now since that merger happened, right? Yeah, but I don't think it goes official until January. Oh. Like officially, they can say that they i think it's already the deal said and done but officially and on paper and court and everything it doesn't go into effect until january i had no idea i thought it was already in effect yeah i i know uh, i was talking to someone who actually works at disney and they were like early on getting the opportunities to buy out some stock uh and kind of you know get an opportunity of a say so of what goes down and stuff like that which i thought was pretty cool yeah that's pretty cool um, other movies that 20th Century Fox had produced that are horror, uh, Jennifer's Body. I don't know if you've ever seen that. That was with Megan Fox. Yeah, no, I, I heard of that movie. I never saw it. I think it was with uh, Amanda Seyfried, too, or something yeah. like that. I never so, saw it. Yeah, she, she gets like, she, I guess this cult, this band wants to be like really big in the in the future. So they sacrifice her thinking that she's a virgin when she's really not. Oh. And so the demon ends up possessing her and stuff like that. And it, It's kind of a, a weird-ass movie. Yeah. Uh, they did the 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later. Oh, yeah. Those are some real good zombie movies. Some though. zombie movies, yeah. Uh, what else did they do? Poltergeist. Oh, really? Both, I didn't know that one. Uh, yeah. Well, they did the remake. I don't know if they did the original. Oh, okay. Um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hmm. That's a classic. That is a very much a classic. Yeah. Uh, what else? Let's see. The Hills Have Eyes. Those are classics, too. The Fly. Uh, the Omen. So much more to uh, count and... Oh yeah, these are very not Mickey Mouse friendly movies. Yeah, so. they did a uh, Victor Frankenstein, the also shitty The Happening. The Happening. That was bad. But that was Stephen King. But yeah, these are all like these are all you know, Amityville horror. Um, these are all movies that are like we we've known, you know, in the horror world to like you know kind of love and stuff like that or. Even if they were shitty, they became cult classics, you know, for their shitty acting or something. Yeah. Speaking of the Amityville Horror, that, I mean, that's a random movie that, like, makes me fear ever going into a new home. Yeah. Just because, like, I would always just be like, what if, like, there is a spirit in that home that, like, takes me over or whatever? Yeah. It just It's one of those things where you think you're going to move into a new home and it's just, boom, haunted. Haunted. Yeah. Not down. Um, one movie that was going to be a horror movie, also a comic book movie, and it, I don't think we're ever going to get it now. I mean, they they're, they're, they literally... They did a screening of the movie. It wasn't good enough as far as scaring-wise goes, so they literally reshot the entire movie, which is the new New Mutants movie. Yeah, I, I had seen like the previews for it. They released the previews in theaters. Yeah. And then it just never came. It was supposed to come out in February. They did a test screening, and I guess it wasn't screened as – they didn't people didn't get as scared as they wanted them to get scared. So I guess they ended up postponing the project till next year. And basically to refilm the entire movie. So wow. we're going to get a cut of the movie we probably won't even get to see, you know? What if, like, of course, maybe they didn't think it was scary, but audience maybe thought yeah, other people maybe thought it was scary, you know? Or what if one version is better than the other, you know? Definitely. You know the best way to, best way to solve this problem? Double feature. Double feature, dude. <laughs> I know you get to see one cut of the movie and then boom, another cut right after. Yeah. Uh, but Disney not only, you know... They own all these properties, of course. They own Marvel, Star Wars. Now they're owning Fox. Uh, and there was a little time in between where uh, Disney almost didn't get Fox because, you know, I think the the Supreme Court, something came down on them saying, you guys own too much stuff. And if you guys go over that, then you guys go beyond a, what a company is. I guess you can only own so much big stuff in the world that, like, if you go beyond that, then you're, like, kind of like the superior company and they yeah it's that. definitely um it's something it's called a monopoly a monopoly yeah yeah it's when you have, besides a fun board game that'll yeah. ruin friendships um, and families and yeah. many other things and will most likely be flipped over by the end of the night um you know and when you own too much things you get to set how the market is um and you can price discriminate and a bunch of different other economic things yeah um and so that's probably why i, I didn't hear about that that ruling in the supreme court but 
it's very interesting that they were saying, hey, you own too much, probably. It doesn't. I mean, it makes sense, though, at the same time, though. It's Disney trying to always buy their shit. I think I, I heard at one point Disney was trying to buy an Apple and Twitter. Oh, wow. And Twitter, yeah. Dang, that that, that deal insane. never went through. Yeah. Thank God that deal never went through. They would have been for sure fucking millionaire. Man, More than multi billionaires. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The mouse would be getting down on you, dude. <laughs> the mouse would be getting down on me. In case you guys didn't know either, Sam is an economics major. Uh, that's why he knows a lot about economics and stuff. So if I need help with some economics on the podcast, he'll he'll put his input in. Yeah, we'll we'll film it live and you know get film some it views live. for it. Film it live, boom. But uh, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I'm just curious to see. Uh, I know this ain't the first. Um, of course, uh, like R rating kind of thing that Disney has ever done. Uh, Disney does have a, another company. I, I forget the name of the company, but it they it's like for more adult type movies. Oh really? Like, as far as like. PG-13 R rating go like serious dramas and stuff like that uh and I, I do forget the name I, I don't remember at the moment but yeah they, they own another company not a lot of people know that because it, it doesn't go under Disney or anything it doesn't have the Disney name in it it's like its own kind of company yeah oh, that's smart though yeah so I mean but Disney man these guys are gonna be making a shit ton of money because of this stuff right yeah I mean more than of money more than they're already making like fuck you go see what Infinity Wars this past year $2 billion, dude. Yeah, I wish I had $2 billion. I'll take $100 at this point in my yeah. life. <laughs> Just something, you know, but I don't know. I, I feel with, with all these, these popular franchises they have, they should capitalize on it. They shouldn't do what they did with Star Wars, though, and kind of butcher the franchise. Well, I think, that's, I think that's what a lot of people fear, like going back to that alien thing. Yeah. Is if they bring back to Gordon Weaver to do like a reboot of the movies, is it going to be the same thing they just did with? These last, well, two episodes of Star Wars when yeah. the third one. Yeah. Um, of course, uh, I, I do have my opinions on Star Wars, and I did not like the last two. But, however, I will sit there and watch the last one because I've already made it this far, and i got to keep going. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, that's, that goes to say with the same thing with the Alien franchise. If they bring back the Alien franchise, is it going to be like how they're doing with Star Wars? Are they just going to milk it for money? Are they just going to... Yeah, try to bring back Sigoria Weaver for st- stuff like that, and I don't know. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would hope if they did bring it back, that they would keep it, you know, true to its roots, but also like let people know that if they are going to be moving away from what people know the Alien franchise to be, yeah, like they would just like put a disclaimer out there. That way, people don't walk out of their theater real upset. Yeah. And being like, "All oh, Disney ever wants is my money." <laughs> um. Well, I was enjoying the Prometheus franchise and that was the the um the you know the prequels to alien yeah it was prometheus and then the last one they did was alien covenant and they were supposed to do a third one but then the fox disney merger happened and you know they just pulled the plug on that yeah so, I heard a lot of people were liking those movies yeah um, and, you know they were making good money so i i would say though prometheus was slow um and a lot of people did not like prometheus uh, but Alien Covenant, it kind of went back to the roots and it's showing you how the aliens were, were made and how they came to be. And a lot of people enjoyed that one. Um, and then when they set it up for another one, they really start getting started on the aliens and stuff like that. Uh, they just kind of pulled the plug on it. And, and Ridley Scott did those too, right? Ridley Scott did do those. Yeah, Ridley Scott came back and, and did those. I think he, he had his hand in a majority of the Alien movies, actually. Yeah, I think I think another smart movie, if they did reboot it, would be to bring back Ridley Scott. Mm-hmm. Um, that's Anytime people hear, oh, Ridley Scott's on this project, they're going to be a little bit more excited. I'm going to be honest. Every time I hear Ridley Scott on a project, I'm sold, usually. Yeah. There goes my bass guitar. Dang, we got all kinds Dang. of craziness in all here. Right. Open up the so pit. Anyway, uh, it's good. It's in good shape. It's still good. I gotta put that. Um, but nonetheless, I think uh, yeah, if they were to bring Ridley Scott back, that'd be a smart move on them, definitely because uh, yeah, like you said, Ridley Scott is a well-known director at this point in his career, and he's done he's accomplished so many stuff. Where at this point, a lot of fans of his work will just come and see the movie regardless if it just had his name in it. Yeah, even if he's just a producer on the movie. Yeah. I mean, that's that, smart move. That's how we do with a lot with J.J. Uh, Abrams. Like, if I see J.J. Abrams in a movie sometimes, the majority of the times I'm probably going to go see it because I'm going to think it's a freaking Cloverfield movie. Yeah, same. It's, you got Spielberg in the same Spielberg, category. Yeah, Spielberg. Uh, who else? A lot of people, too. Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah. He's like a big-time one. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm just hoping that Fox can not screw it up this time around 
and hopefully make the right decision. Uh, it was Disney Fox, you know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm hoping. I mean, they they've done good with Marvel. That was good for them. That was a good investment on them. They they've created something with Marvel that was that was good. Well, I actually kind of owe that to Kevin Feige. Kevin Feige has been doing that shit before they even were owned by Disney. Yeah. Um, because they were with Paramount for a little bit. I think up until like Iron Man three or Thor two, and then Disney finally bought them out. So, uh, yeah, it was with Paramount, and then Disney finally bought them out, and they were in their own studio now. Star Wars, I would say they're doing better on the Star Wars stores than they actually are on the episodes. Definitely agree. But ever since the the numbers for Solo weren't too good, and that was due to a lot of people hating Episode Eight, they won't bring you know they're not bringing those back anytime soon. They're just trying to wrap up the trilogy right now. Yeah, so that, I mean, I think that's where you got that that fear. If they rebooted any of these classic horror movies we discussed, yeah, is if they do that and they, you know, really mess it up, they're gonna be like, done. "What are you doing?" Yeah, it's done. Um, so yeah, man, I'm I'm just hoping, hopefully, Disney doesn't fuck it up. Um, to wrap up, kind of a little introductory of the podcast. We're gonna kind of start doing maybe little, little or shorter podcast than I usually do. I used to do like an hour, hour and a half. But if we stick to one topic, we can get at, in and out of here maybe 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, I prefer that. Yeah. I have a short attention span. So. Oh, yeah. Um, but I used to do the podcast differently, and I want to just start focusing on one, maybe two topics. Definitely. But I got a, got a couple of uh, shout-outs that I want to do. First okay. and foremost, uh, a podcast I have been listening to called Kim and Ket Stay Alive, maybe, where they talk about horror movies and their scenarios and what they would do in those horror movies. And I am in love with this podcast right now. That sounds like a fun podcast. I'm probably going to have to give that a listen. Oh, yeah, definitely. Give those, give those uh, ladies a listen. Those ladies are killing it right now. Definitely, because uh, every time I'm in the movie theater, I'm always like, don't go in there. Yep. Don't you do it. So you can see what their kind of uh, scenarios would be in these in these type of movies. And they and they do different movies and stuff like that, which is cool. Um, and I, I really enjoy uh, listening to their podcast. I told them I'd give them a nice little shout out in this podcast. Because uh, I haven't done a Mindless Horror podcast in like two months. Wow. Yeah, it's been a while. That's a really long we time. We had a new co-host, uh, and then he moved to Fullerton, and it was hard for him to get out here. Uh, George, I don't think, just wants to do it anymore. So now I lay the torch on you. Yeah, I'm down. I have no life. <laughs> I mean, you're always texting me anyway, so <laughs> come on down. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be bringing this back. Uh, one last thing, too. We do... Somewhat have a sponsor, but not really a sponsor. They don't pay us, nor do uh, I get money from them or anything. Oh, man. But, however, they do hook my fans up with some free stuff, which oh, is that's, cool. Oh, that's good, then. Yeah. Let me see if I can find it real quick. But uh, Shutter is a streaming uh, service that's all dedicated to horror. And uh, they have a lot of cool stuff on there. One time, they had a couple of uh, Stephen King stuff. They had a lot of, lot of different... Uh, Things. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to find my promo code. I remember my promo code. But, uh, yeah, so Shudder offers a lot of a lot of good stuff on their service from anything like different horror movies, original horror movies. They'll bring a lot of um, classic horror movies onto their site. Depending on the season, maybe this season they're going to bring a lot of Christmas B horror movies, which is pretty funny, pretty cool to look Bunch at. Bunch of Krumpus movies or what? Yeah, dude. So uh, check out Shudder, and Shudder was very cool to hook us, my fans, up with a 14-day free trial. Go to Shudder.com, log it, sign up using promo code MINDLESS to get your 14-day free trial at Shudder. Uh, and, yeah, enjoy your Christmas at least for 14 days. And if you guys like it, subscribe to them. Yeah, definitely. For sure. So, yeah, that is Shudder.com. Sign up using promo code MINDLESS, and you'll get a 14-day free trial. They're really cool. They're like, we gave you an extra seven days because we only ever offer seven days free. We want your fans to get an extra seven. Dang, so that's go. respect right there. That's respect right there. So one more time, Shudder.com. Sign up using promo code MINDLESS to get a 14-day free trial of Shudder. And I hope you guys enjoy because I do enjoy Shudder. I uh, put on a horror movie every now and then. With that being said, that is going to wrap up the Mindless Horror Podcast, the return. Um, going to try to make these a weekly thing again. I uh, don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but I'll probably text you sometime throughout the yeah, week. We could talk about Boats and Hoes and boats my love for Stepbrothers. Your love Just for kidding. Stepbrothers. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll probably uh, 
maybe give you a little horror trivia, see if you know it. You probably won't know it though. I'm gonna know nothing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go O for whatever we go for. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with a, a trivia for next week's episode. I'm gonna send you each question and then I want you to research them and then you find the answers and hopefully you'll know your stuff. We'll see. I'm going to give you a whole study session for the week, but I know you're a busy guy because you work for uh, a congresswoman. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But uh, thank you guys for listening to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Hope you guys enjoy the new co-host, Sammy. Yeah, it'll definitely drop a comment if you guys have any questions. Yep, or don't. <laughs> or don't. <laughs> you know? Whatever you want to do. Just a view and a like would be nice, too. Yeah, Thumbs but up. A, a comment would be sick. Comment I want nice. I want to know what you guys want to know about me. Yeah. I'm willing to answer any and every question. Of course. Hopefully, hey, Sammy. Don't, don't appreciate the answers. Okay, hopefully, Sammy comes to more uh, maybe media events with me. We'll see. We'll he's, see. Yeah, he's, he's uh, very interested in that. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely interested. Um, I kind of want to get a GoPro. GoPro. So they can, uh, you know, see all my facial reactions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Sammy. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for being the new co-host. All right. Yeah, it's been fun. And we'll see you next week. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>